Okay, let me um, show you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be waxing a premolar um, on a articulated model. We have a mandibular cast and a maxillary cast. They've been die pinned, as you can see from behind, so the pieces can come in and out, as you can see. Uh, three of the teeth have been prepared for crowns, and the one in particular that we're going to be working on today is the premolar, or tooth number um, 29, or in the international code it would be tooth 4-4 or 44. Uh, we've at, got adequate space. We have a chamfer or shoulder margin that we'll be finishing to. If you look carefully, you'll see a, uh, a red line that's been drawn at the edge. So we'll be carrying the mar mar uh, wax right to that margin, but not beyond it, or right to the red line, but not past. Um, of course, we've got the model. I've got some Vaseline that I'm going to use to. Um, Lubricate the adjacent teeth and the opposing teeth so that they don't stick. I have a lab knife. We have a wax spatula. A cleoid discoid. And a Hollenbach. I also have a toothbrush that I'll be using to um, clean off uh, particles of wax and I have a piece of nylon stocking that I can use to polish. I also have, my, have a Sharpie marker. So let's do a few things before we start. First of all, I want to know where the teeth come in and out. So I'm going to take my Sharpie marker, I'm going to identify the hole that the die pin goes into, and then I'm going to mark that hole so that I can quickly insert and remove that tooth without having to guess which hole it was in. I'll do the same for the other teeth. You can see I've already done that. But for each of the other teeth, I will mark the hole that the die pin inserts into. And the same for this larger segment. I've marked um, which of the holes the die pins insert. That will allow rapid insertion and removal. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of Vaseline, lubricate my finger, and I'm going to lightly lubricate um, the teeth so that things won't stick. Like that, for example. Just lightly rub across the teeth. It will also help the contrast of the anatomy to show up a little bit better on, on the movie especially in the case of the adjacent teeth. I'm going to make sure that I lubricate a little bit the proximal surface. Same thing here, we'll, I'm going to lubricate those proximal surfaces. And we'll take a little bit of Vaseline and we're going to lubricate the opposing arch so that when we close into the warm wax it won't it won't stick. All right. Oh, I also forgot to mention I have a heat source. Um, professional lab technicians will use a an electronic waxer, which is like one of these, but electronically um, controlled. And they can dial the temperature into the wax. That's a better way to wax. I just don't happen to have one. So we'll be using a simple um, propane torch. You could also use an alcohol lamp. That would be a, a good choice. So let's zoom in here just a little bit. See if we can get a little bit better angle. Okay, let's begin our waxing. Uh, we'll turn on our heat source. You see we've formed a flame that's um, a moderate sized flame. We don't need a, a blowtorch here, but 
a moderate amount of heat. We're going to take the wax spatula, pass it into the flame until it's warm, and then I'll capture some wax on the spatula, and then I'll pass it into the, the flame again. And now I'm going to start by building my facial wall. Just take that molten wax and drop it directly onto the model. And I'm trying to carry that right up to the shoulder, but not beyond. And I'll just let that cool for a moment before I set it down. I'll do the same thing again. We'll warm the wax spatula. Capture some wax onto it. Warm it again briefly. Now I'm going to build my lingual wall. And we'll just let that cool for a moment. And we'll repeat. On the wax spatula. Capture a little bit of wax. Warm it again. And begin to build the inner proximal walls. Okay. Yeah, we're going to continue the process. We're now building our distal wall. I'm going to reinforce a little bit more on the facial wall. Uh, if you're wondering how much to build on that wall, you really use the adjacent teeth. There's a, a number of things that guide you in your waxing. Certainly one is the, the amount of tooth structure on the teeth just on either side of the one you're waxing. So I want to stick out facially as far as they do. And I want to stick out as far lingually as they do. Eventually we'll start looking at the incline of those adjacent teeth and use that as a guide as to what kind of incline we should establish. So a little bit more all around to the facial and the walls. Now I'm going to begin adding to um, the occlusal plane. Just cover over that center section. Let's fill it right in. We add a little bit more to the facial, kind of the transition between the facial and the occlusal. Again, just using the adjacent teeth as a guide. I usually put the model kind of parallel to the tabletop so that as it cools it doesn't run and form little puddles of wax. I'll do the same thing on the lingual side. Here's another good guide. Uh, the marginal ridges of the adjacent teeth give you a great guide as to how far you should build up the occlusal plane. I'm going to go just a little higher to get up to the height of that marginal ridge on the molar. Now I'm going to add a little bit more to my facial cusp just to bring it up to height. I may have gotten that wax just a little warm. You saw how it spread over a little bit broader area than I wanted. 